All right. Hello, everybody. Thanks for spending your lunch time uh, here to learn about deploying Tableau Server in the US federal government. So how many of you work either directly for the federal government or for a contractor? OK, good. <laughs> Um, you're in the right place, that's very good. So my name is Kyle Gupton. I am a product manager, uh, director of product management at Tableau in the development team. And I work with our customers in the vertical markets that we pay special attention to. Um, so for us, that's public sector, healthcare, and financial services. It's a lot of the regulated industries. And what I do is help make sure that we in the development team understand some of the unique needs of uh, you guys and customers in both healthcare as well as financial services. And actually, uh, some there's a lot of overlap between those as well, uh, places like the VA and so forth. Um, so I work with uh, a number of different things. Uh, accessibility, if any of you are interested in accessibility, I've got an accessibility talk on Friday. Uh, and then I work with some of the other legal things as well, like uh, some of the data privacy laws uh, that are coming on board. So uh, today, basically, um, I'm gonna talk about uh, kind of the framework of cybersecurity requirements that are common within the US federal government uh, and how you can configure and deploy Tableau Server um, so that you can meet those requirements. Uh, it's a pretty confusing subject, and I know we've gotten a lot of input from our customers in um, wanting more guidance for how you can be successful uh, in these deployments. And I would say that this presentation, as well as a brand new white paper that I'm gonna mention uh, later on, is kind of a first step in that journey. And so I also wanna take the opportunity today, while we have so many people who are dealing with this in the same room, to get some more input from you on the specifics of what you're dealing with and what kind of guidance would be helpful for you. Um, because one of the things that we've noticed is that there is a huge amount of variability among the requirements from our customers. It's almost like you know, there's some common things, um, but you know, any individual deployment uh, can have pretty radically different security requirements than any other deployment that we encounter. And so it is challenging to figure out, okay, what are the, the really core requirements that we can help with? And so uh, that's a big part of my job, and I wanna use this session for that. So uh, there are a couple of other sessions. Um, one of them is about to start and one's this afternoon uh, that are somewhat related to this one. There's a Tableau security uh, session uh, and then there's a session on deploying in Azure. It's not specific to Azure government, um, but it does have some relevant content in terms of deploying uh, Tableau server in those environments. So in terms of the agenda today, I'm gonna to start out by giving a background to make sense of this kind of interlocking framework of laws and requirements and such to make sure that we all kind of are on the same page uh, with how all this stuff fits together. And then I'm gonna go into the, specifically the NIST 800-53 control matrix and uh, talk about best practices for deploying Tableau Server uh, within that framework. Um, in order to prepare this, we did uh, work with the consulting company Coalfire, who you might well know um, is pretty well known in the cybersecurity world, particularly in the federal government. Uh, and they basically did an audit of Tableau Server um, to advise us on best, best ways to, to deal with these um, situations and you know, talking about any gaps in the product that we might have had uh, that we need to work on. And so a lot of this content um, comes from that engagement with Coalfire. And um, so that's where, where that uh, stuff came from and who we worked with on this. And so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the background. So all of this starts with a law called FISMA, um, which was a 2002 law, the Federal Information Security Management Act. And it basically attempted to standardize and provide guidance on how US federal government agencies can better secure information systems. So one of the things that it did is it created uh, and funded, well, it funded the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, uh, or NIST, uh, to create something called the Risk Management Framework, uh, which is a set of different um, requirements, uh, processes, et cetera, that allow people who are deploying IT systems in the federal space to assess um, the kind of secure, the necessary security posture of the system, like you know, what is the classification in terms of what kind of data is being stored in the system, what are the consequences if that data were to be released into the wild and so forth, um, and then provide a set of security controls um, based on the risk profile of the particular system uh, that's necessary for the system in order to meet the requirements of the law. 
That law was updated in 2014. Uh, it's now called the Federal Information Systems Modernization Act. Um, but really, it's this NIST risk management framework uh, that kind of is the core of the specifics. Um, and in particular, um, the, that is the mute button. Um, this guy down here, SP 800-53, is the main document that we're concerned with here. And so this is called the Security and Privacy Controls for Federal Information Systems and Organizations. And it's a, it's a captivating read. Um, and it's, it's somewhat difficult to understand. You know, there's a, there's a lot of uh, vagaries in it, um, which again makes this challenging because like, you know, are you really meeting this requirement? And what exactly does this requirement mean? And there's a lot of kind of blanks in it where the individual agency fills in their own specifics uh, on some of these requirements. And hence, that's the root of a lot of the variability we see from our customers. But um, that document and standard basically provides a roadmap for how you can better secure systems um, to comply with the law. Some of the other things that are related to it, um, there's another thing called FIPS 140-2, uh, which is a NIST standard for cryptographic modules. Uh, so these are either pieces of hardware or software that perform encryption and decryption, and it's a set of requirements around not only the specific algorithms that are used for the cryptography, but also how the modules themselves are implemented, how the hardware is implemented, how the software is implemented. Um, and there are multiple levels of, or there are three different levels of, you know, kind of uh, security with these cryptographic modules. And they, you know, the, the hardware ones are interesting because they have things like, you know, tamper resistant um, cases and things like that are part of the requirements here. So if, you know, a hardware device were manipulated or changed by someone physically, you'd be able to tell that someone uh, touched the device. So it's an interesting standard. Um, and the reason it's relevant is that the NIST 800-53 framework um, basically says that any cryptography that is, any cryptography in the system that is fulfilling one of the requirements of the framework, whether it's a cryptographic requirement or some other requirement, must be done by what's called a FIPS 140-2 validated module. Or it might as well not even be encrypted. That's the, the official stance of the 800-53 framework on that subject. Um, and so the FIPS validated modules are basically hardware and software modules that have gone through a formal validation process um, run by the National Institute of Standards and Technologies to validate whether or not they um, comply uh, with the requirements of the standard. Okay? And we're going to come back to that later uh, and talk about how to deal with that in Tableau Server. But I just want to kind of set that uh, down as a, as a baseline so everybody knows what I'm talking about when I talk about 140-2. How many of you are familiar with that? Oh, a handful. Okay, good. All right. So maybe some good background here. Then, um, if you move over to the Department of Defense, and how many of you are doing defense-related things? Okay, so a good chunk of you. Uh, we have kind of a related but parallel um, way of doing the uh, control validation and so forth. So there's a directive, a Department of Defense Directive 8500.01, uh, that basically set in place the creation of things called SRGs and STIGs, Security Requirements Guides and Security Technical Implementation Guides. And DISA publishes these and updates them regularly, pretty much on a quarterly basis. And what they are are a set of recipes for how to properly configure different classes of products to meet the requirements of the 800-53 uh, controls plus additional things that the Department of Defense has deemed important. So um, the SRGs, or the Security Requirements Guides, are documents that talk at a high level about security configuration of classes of products like operating systems, web servers, databases, like that. And then, based on those individual SRGs, there are product-specific STIGs, which are recipes for how to configure a specific product, like Windows 10 Enterprise, for example, or SQL Server, some version, in order to meet the requirements of the Security Requirements Guide. And it's literally something that you can follow step by step and you know, do your configuration, and it's pretty prescriptive. You can sit down with it and 
Some of them are big. They're sometimes hundreds of uh, controls long. And you can sit down and set up the configuration of the products in order to meet the requirements. And they have a little thing down here in the left. It's called a STIG viewer, which is a great application for loading up the XML file that's the STIG. And, and by the way, it's really hard to make visually interesting slides about topics like this. <laughs> so what I've done is basically have like screenshots of like documents and pieces of our documentation and so forth. All of them have live links to the, the content itself. So when you get the slides after the, the presentation or after the conference is over, all of these things have links on them. So this one to the right opens up the directive, the one to the left you know, opens up the DISA web page and the STIG viewer where you can get the STIG viewer and so forth. So it's meant to be helpful um, after the fact as well as keep it from just being a giant block of text or nothing. <laughs> so anyway. Okay, so in terms of a step Tableau server deployment, there are a few SRGs and STIGs that are relevant. Now, again, like I said, there's a lot of variability um, in what individual customers are needing to do, and it's based on whoever is the, the specific agency and whoever is doing the security review. The ones that are kind of in scope of potentially being relevant, the, the three main SRGs are application server, database, and web server. So application server, because that's what Tableau server is, basically. That's its class of product. Um, database, because it has a built-in database in it. It has a Postgres database that serves as its repository for storing um, all sorts of internal information. Um, and then, of course, it's also a web server. It has the Apache web server built into it. That's what you're actually hitting when you send um, requests to Tableau server. So that means that there are basically three STIGs that may come into play um, when working with this. So the first is a STIG called the Application Security and Development STIG, or AppSec Dev, as some people call it. Um, and that's a fairly high level STIG um, that really talks about the entirety of the system. It's not specific to Tableau server, it's about the entirety of the system. Um, and that you know, includes like wireless access to the system, uh, things that are kind of far outside of the scope of what Tableau server offers. Then there are specific um, STIGs for the Apache server, both on Windows and Unix, and then there's one on uh, the Postgres uh, database as well. The ones that we see most commonly are the first two the AppSec dev and the Apache. A lot of the customers, some of, the, some of our customers are dealing with the Postgres one as well, um, but a, I would say more aren't than are um, because it's seen as, well, it's a completely internal database that's only communicated with by Tableau server. It's not you know, accessible to the outside world and so forth. Um, so a lot of, um, Agencies aren't trying to apply the Postgres STIG, but the first two are pretty common. Usually if someone's dealing with STIG and Tableau Server, they're dealing with the first two. And so that actually brings up a question that I have, is what actually are you dealing with? Like I said, we, we talk to lots of customers and it's pretty much different with every one. And I'm, you know, we've got a big room full of customers here. Does anybody wanna tell us kind of what you're dealing with? Yeah. Is, is there a specific set of frameworks that you're applying to the system, like the ones that I've talked about, or? Uh, no, not, not specifically yet. Just okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah, a lot of permissions level things, making sure that you know least least privileges princip uh, principles for permissions. We talk about that a bit later. Anybody else? volunteer your pain. <laughs> no? Come on. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, thank you. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So we we do work with Afnic, um, is who does the the Air Force Network, the integration center, integration center. Yeah. Who does the approvals? Um, and so yeah, we we work with them closely on that stuff. And so yeah, I know that's a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What do you mean low to high in terms of the? Got it, okay. Um, all right, it's an interesting. I'd, I'd like to talk about that. It's not. Host. Okay, this would be an interesting discussion to have. Um, make sure I kind of understand what you're talking about. So if you maybe hang around afterwards, we can talk about it a little more, that would be good. Yep, or we can set up a time or a call for at post-conference or something like that, that would be great. Okay, anyone else before I move on? Okay, great. So um, now let's move in. So any, any questions about the, the background, the backdrop, you know, the NIST standards, stigma, or, uh, STIG, FISMA, any of those things before I move on? Okay, all right, so let's dive in then into the 800-53 controls. So I said at the beginning that we have a new white paper available. Um, this was written by Coal Fire um, in conjunction with us, uh, and it basically went live on our website last Friday, so just in the nick of time for this presentation. Um, it's about deploying Tableau Server in the US federal government uh, applications. Uh, and what it is is kind of an overview of the framework and then a control by control reference of the 800-53 standard um, for the controls that are relevant to Tableau Server. Um, because one of the things that I mentioned uh, earlier is these standards are really about the entirety of the system. They're not about Tableau Server specifically, they're about the entire software hardware stack. And like, eight, so 853 has requirements like who has access to the physical machines that's running the system. You know, those requirements are part of the 853 standard and you know, that's not particularly relevant to Tableau Server. And so the, the white paper talks about those that are specific to server. And you know, it was interesting when we were working with Coalfire, they said something to us at the very beginning of the engagement that said, there's really no reason why a product, even if the product was never designed to deal with this, would not be able to be deployed in a way that's compliant with this framework. It just depends on you know, where the load is in terms of, you know, is it on the infrastructure, is it in the specific software product itself that handles different controls? And it's a mix in a Tableau server deployment. Some things need to be handled at the infrastructure level, uh, at the software infrastructure level, um, and some things can be handled directly inside of Tableau Server itself. Um, so anyway, so that's a, a really important thing to keep in mind. I get questions all the time, you know, is Tableau Server 800-53 compliant? It's like, well, mm, that's not a great question. Um, it's, you know, can you appropriately deploy a system that complies with 800-53 that's running Tableau Server, and is Tableau Server putting up any obstacles that prevent you from being able to deploy something? That's really the question. And the answer is, people deploy systems all the time that meet these standards or that are judged to meet the standards. Basically, any system that's running in the federal government or DOD has been evaluated to, as far as they are concerned, meet the requirements. Um, and again, you know, each agency that's doing the evaluation is responsible for whether they you know, approve the system, give it the authority to operate the ATO or not, um, based on, again, the security profile. And, you know, they have, the, the different evaluators have different requirements. And it, again, it varies. 
Okay, so in terms of the control matrix, I'm not gonna uh, read all of these, um, but these are the categories of the control matrix of 800-53 um, that are relevant to Tableau Server. And so there's, some in, there's a, one or two more groups of controls that aren't relevant to Tableau Server, but these are the ones. And it's a lot of things around uh, user authentication, permissions, cryptography, um, configuration management, all of those sorts of things are kind of what's relevant to Tableau Server. So the first big group of it is called access control. It's basically logging into the system. And there's a whole host of requirements for access control um, that must be met, and there, there are things like you know, password complexity, um, you know, password refresh requirements, as well as a bunch of other stuff. And basically, the guidance here, and this is pretty standard practice um, in all of our large enterprises in government, is in order to meet these requirements, you need to use an external identity store like Active Directory that meets those requirements. You know, Tableau Server has a built-in authentication system um, for doing user management. It's really designed for small-scale deployments, you know, things that are being done, you know, you could say back in the day of um, when a lot of Tableau servers were like just boxes under somebody's desk, uh, you know, when it was just getting off the ground. But now that people are, um, and have been for a while, deploying large scale application level systems, uh, most everybody is using an external store like Active Directory or something else. And so uh, that is kind of a first line requirement is it needs to be integrated with that. And of course, that's something that Tableau Server does support. Another set of requirements around um, access control is session timeout. So how long can a session be idle or you know, a web browser be left open before the session times out? And there is a way to configure that in Tableau Server. The, the default is like 240 minutes, I believe, and the requirement is more like 15 minutes, if I remember correctly. Um, and so we have documentation available on our website that shows how to go and set that user session timeout um, to be in line with, and, and session termination, to be in line with the requirements of 800-53. Okay. All right. Did I? Oh my god. It is, yes, yep. Sorry, I would. <laughs> I just did something embarrassing. I'm, I was talking to the next slide, <laughs> and not the slide that was actually showing, because the next slide is bigger on my screen. Um, pardon me, so let me, let me go back to this guy. Uh, so access control. So this is really about um, the permissions, kind of the stuff we were talking about a while ago, is you know, what level of permissions um, do people have in order to be able to you know, work on the server, whether it's administrative functions on the server, um, or uh, whether it's actually working with data and the content on the server. And of course, Tableau has a very rich permissions mechanism. Um, there are site roles if you're using sites on server, and then there are all sorts of permissions on the content that you can set up. And basically, um, any agency is going to need to figure out kind of what their approach to this permissioning is in order to satisfy these least, uh, least privileged um, principles which is basically the idea that um, any individual user only has access to what that individual user needs to have access to. They have the least privileges possible um, for them to do their role. It's not kind of an, everybody has access to everything and you know, by exclusion, it's more you have to be specifically included um, in uh, the permissions to do something. All right, there we go. Now it's session lock and termination. I mentioned that one already. Configure it to meet the requirements of 800-53. So the next here is the requirement called information flow. Uh, and this talks basically about how to properly deploy server within the IT infrastructure itself. And so there's basically kind of two ways that you can deal with this. Um, either deploy Tableau server behind a front end load balancer um, or in a what's called a DMZ or demilitarized zone environment where the connectivity from the outside world is hitting a proxy server which then communicates to Tableau server itself. 
And this is gonna be critically important when we get to the cryptographic standards um, because in order to comply with the requirements of a FIPS 140-2 validated cryptography for doing the SSL communication that is between, oh, I keep hitting the wrong button, um, basically this part here between the load balancer and the intranet or internet, that not, needs to be uh, encrypted, I said SSL, TLS uh, encryption. So that load balancer or proxy server will need to have on it a hardware or software FIPS 140-2 validated cryptographic module uh, in order to meet those requirements, which is pretty common. Do you mean like PKI enabled device? Uh, PKI enabled device. Oh, so so no, so this is this is specifically for the the like you know when you like HTTPS the encryption of the the communication between your web browser and the server itself. It's for doing that cryptography. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Yeah, you, you, yep. yeah, you can, I think by default they're not, but you can use one that is, yeah. So like the, the AWS Elastic Load Balancer, either there's a version of it or it has a mode that puts it into FIPS mode so that it does this. And generally hardware cryptography is kind of what you wanna go with because you don't want the servers to have to do all of the you know, encryption and decryption in software. Uh, so typically this is done at the hardware level in these sorts of systems. Okay, so auditing. Uh, so this is an interesting one. So there's all sorts of requirements around uh, logging and auditing of various uh, operations and activities on the system that are part of the framework. Um, so there's a, a cluster of these things about, you know, make sure you audit or you, know, you log the right stuff. 800-53 uh, is pretty vague about the specifics of what needs to be logged. It, it is kind of, this is one of those examples where you have a big blank that says, you know, the system logs the stuff that the agency says needs to be logged. You know, that, that's it. Um, but if you go and you start looking at the STIGs, they get very, very, very specific about exactly what needs to be logged. And Tableau Server produces a ton of audit records. Uh, and they come in basically two places. Um, one is that internal repository database. Uh, remember the Postgres database that's part of Tableau Server that I mentioned? One of its functions is to collect audit records for the operations that are done on the server. So you can see you know, what requests were made, um, who made those requests, uh, all of those sorts of things are what's logged to um, the historical tables. There's a historical tables in the database. And we have documentation on all of the items that are logged um, into the repository database. Uh, and like everything else, that thing to the left is a live link to where you can find that documentation um, for us. Additionally, the individual components of Tableau Server, like the Apache Web Server, like the Postgres database, like the Tom, you know, all these basically pieces that make up Tableau Server, the software, are also producing log files. And so there's a directory on the Tableau server machine where all these log files are dumped. And you can find out um, where they are um, with the, this documentation to the right, which basically gives you a big list of all of the log files that are created and where they are. And we have a utility that you can download from Git, GitHub called um, LogShark. And it's basically a program that you can use uh, to load up these log files so you can look at them to see what they're all logging. Because if you try to open them up, they're text files, but they're hard to understand. The log shark utility allows you to see them, kind of the events, and you can see what item is logged for each event, and they know how to process all of the different types of log files that are created by Tableau Server. And so that's where you can get that information. Okay. 
Uh, there's another requirement in the auditing part that talks about response to audit. Uh, basically, is it logged if there's a problem with the audit records? Uh, Tableau Server does log events when there's a problem logging, uh, and it, you can configure it to send alerts, uh, email alerts to someone in the event that there's a problem with that Postgres database. Uh, and that's something uh, that you might need to do in order to meet the requirements. Because audit records are basically critical for determining you know, what happens in case there's a security breach. You wanna know, like, you know what went on in the deep into the system and it's the audit records which allow you to do uh, that kind of investigation. And so you need to know if the thing stops logging, you need to know that. All right. Another requirement in the auditing um, is around protection of the audit information, uh, basically to make sure that it can't be manipulated or deleted, and these are just stored in directories on the system, and you can configure the permissions of those directories uh, to be the proper administrative user on the system uh, only so that someone else couldn't come along and delete you know, audit records and like hide a, hide a trail of um, you know, some kind of security breach or something like that. All right, um, another one talking about uh, least functionality configuration settings, uh, basically making sure that you don't have a bunch of open TCP IP ports on your system uh, so that you only have the ones open that are necessary. Uh, we have documentation on uh, what ports are required so that you can turn off the ones that aren't required and so forth so you can configure the system correctly. We have requirements, uh, there are requirements around information system backup. This is another big example of um, where the standard is kind of blank on what the requirements are. They just say that the system needs to support the agency's backup requirements and Tableau Server has commands that you can execute that allow you to back it up, um, and so you can integrate that with whatever your backup strategy needs to be in terms of like custom backup scripts or things like that um, to tell Tableau Server to back up, and when it backs up, it's backing up mainly that Postgres database and, and those sorts of things. It's all the content, the configuration settings, and so forth is what's included in these server backups. All right. So uh, back to kind of identification and authentication. Uh, there's a big clump of these uh, in, this, in this group. Again, these all require the integration with the external identity store like uh, Active Directory um, in order to meet those requirements. You know, the, the built-in uh, authentication of Tableau Server does not meet the requirements. That's why you can integrate it with something else that does. Okay, um, and then there's uh, a clump of things around, again, cryptography. So I already mentioned uh, on the kind of transmission, so uh, crypto, uh, encryption of information in transit, basically communication from outside the server to inside the, sorry, outside the system to inside the system. Um, and so your system does need to be deployed by a, behind a load balancer or a proxy server that has a FIPS 142, 140-2 validated cryptographic module built into it. Um, one thing that I neglected to mention that's a good thing is when you're doing these, it's super important to define your system boundary of like what, what is the boundary, you know, I, I mentioned that 800-53 is at the system level. It's important to know exactly, well, what is in the system and what's out of the system because that's basically the rule of, you know, once you're in the system, you can kind of do what you, you know, the system can kind of do what it does because it's protected from the outside world. You just gotta make sure that that boundary is well defined and so it's things like deploying behind a load balancer that allow you to say it's okay, outside the load balancer is outside the system. Once you're behind it, you're inside the system and thus safe. And then finally, there's also requirements around protection of the information at rest itself. So, 
this is anything that's stored to disk um, inside of the system. Uh, in order to do this um, in a cryptographic way, uh, you again need to use a 140-2 validated module uh, mechanism in order to do this cryptography. Uh, a common way people do it is they use hard disk level encryption um, on the actual machines and there are modes that you can set up, for example, like on Windows, so that it's built in um, hard disk level encryption is using a FIPS 140-2 validated module. Another strategy uh, people use is there are some third party tools that kind of overlay on top of the entirety of the system. Um, and they, a uh, good example of this would be Vormetric by Talus. Um, I know a lot of our customers in the federal government use that in conjunction with Tableau Server uh, to basically do encryption of all of the data that's in the server and so forth. Um, but there's, there's multiple ways that you can handle it. Um, one, one thing to note is we recently uh, released a new encryption at rest functionality for hyper data extracts on Tableau Server that came in our 2019.3 um, enterprise um, server management uh, bundle. That does not at this point have a FIPS 142-2 validated module built into it, so it wouldn't meet those requirements, but that is something that we're looking into. Um, so you could use that as an alternative way to, to uh, store that, sorry, encrypt that data at rest. Okay. Then there are requirements around the system and information integrity. So a lot of this, again, remember these are at the system level, and so there are requirements around making sure that the system is secure, uh, that it can't be attacked you know, through some sort of typical um, internet-based attack. So for our software, we do run a suite of tools um, in order to you know, scan the software, to simulate attacks and so forth. Um, we do static code analysis using tools like Coverity to look for security flaws. It's part of our normal process for developing software. And we do have some documentation um, that I'll show you in a bit uh, that talks about our own internal security practices. And so, you know, this is not, this doesn't satisfy the requirement because it's really only speaking to Tableau Server. The requirement applies to the system as a whole, remember. Um, but this can give some information about our own internal security practices for how we develop the software. Uh, in particular, you know, things like our security uh, engineering principles, you know, we do have a security review process when, um, you know, kind of how the sausage is made, when someone puts together a specification for a feature, there's a particular, you know, security evaluation process uh, that's there that the development teams have to go through. They are reviewed with the features and, and new capabilities are reviewed with members of our product security team. And by the way, our chief information security officer is sitting right over here. <laughs> Hi, Ben. And um, he runs our product security team. Um, and so there's a whole process that we go through to make sure that we're not you know, engineering security flaws into the product itself uh, to make sure that we're catching all of those things um, that would be you know, likely mistakes that could be easily made in coding. And so we have a white paper, it's called Tableau Secure Software Development, that talks about how we do secure software development at Tableau. Okay, so I know a lot of that's dry material. Um, that's basically the gist of the control matrix. There's more detail in the white paper than what I went through here, uh, but that's basically the gist of things. You know, some big ticket items, integration with uh, external identity stores, identity providers, um, making sure you're deployed in a proper configuration behind a load balancer or a proxy server that has the 140-2 validated module, you know, encryption at rest, deploying to systems um, that have you know, volume or disk drive encryption enabled using the FIPS module. Uh, those are the big things um, in terms of the infrastructure itself. Like I said, there's lots of audit functionality um, built into the, to the server that you need to evaluate yourself to make sure uh, it meets the requirements of your particular situation. Um, and you can use tools like LogShark, our documentation, et cetera, so you can get a picture of everything that's logged. And so the question, next question I have is, what more kind of guidance and help can we give for this sort of thing? 
you know, I know this is you know, brand new out there, no one's had a chance to see what we just put out there, but this is really the first time we've given guidance to our customers on how to uh, deploy in these configurations. Um, one of the things, and I'll, I'll, I'll put something out there that we've talked about, uh, is creating STIG checklists for Tableau Server. So you know, when you're going through the STIG process, one of the things you do is you go through the, the STIG viewer and you can load up a STIG and then go through for every single control documents, you know, does the system meet this control or not, and evaluate um, how that is. A lot of the stuff that's needed uh, in order to complete the STIG checklist is stuff that's not exactly easy to figure out because it's stuff that's done inside of Tableau. And so one of the things we've thought about doing is creating a set of like reference STIG checklists that you know, answer the questions that you can't really answer yourself, like is the right, because I mentioned audit logs, so STIG is like super um, specific about what audit records are created for like the Apache server and so forth, and so we can go through, does that sound like something that would be useful? When would that be done? When? <laughs> uh, it's a lot of work, <laughs> but yeah, okay. All right, yes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, a pre-stig Docker container, yeah. That's something we talked to a, a, uh, a customer recently who's doing some work at the Air Force um, about basically creating like even that or like a virtualized environment where everything is already configured, uh, virtual machines that it's configured and, and so forth. Yep, exactly, okay. This is, this is uh, Jenga, he's one of my colleagues in the team, and he's done a ton of security deployments at financial services companies and so forth. Used to work at Oracle and some other places as well. So in order, I mean. Just for the So what would what, you use to do it? I mean, Tableau Server, yeah. I mean, Tableau Server does have the, the ability to do built-in TLS encryption, but it's not at this point done by a FIPS 140-2 validated module. Yeah, but Apache doesn't. Does that make sense? Okay. <laughs> so, the, the, not what he's talking about. He's uh, Jenga's working on <laughs> on another like deployment architectures, you know, ways to do this. So yeah, it's a the big initiative inside is for us to be able to provide better guidance on these sorts of things um, to our customers. Okay, so definitely, so STIG checklists, big thumbs up there, right on. Um, Docker containers, virtual environments, anything else? And it, yeah. Yeah, so 
usually that comes into us in the form of specific questions. Like, you know, one of our customers will have a question because at their agency, they're doing it this way. Um, I would say we do not work that frequently with it at a higher level to sit down and like, okay, let's, you know, work with the CIO and figure out what's going on. You know, I, I think that could probably be helpful. Um, you know, an, another thing that we've talked about, and I don't, this is gonna be tough, is a Tableau server STIG itself. Like actually create a specific STIG for Tableau server. Is that something that would be interesting or you yeah, nodding? <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a, it, there's a big burden to do that um, and to keep it updated and so forth. Um, and so we need to evaluate, is that the best way to handle it? Um, is there a, you know, is that the most efficient way to deal with this problem um, and so forth? So that's something else that we've talked about internally uh, is doing something like that. And that would, the idea is it would subsume all of the sub stigs underneath it. You know, it would itself, you know, take, had the requirements of the AppSec dev stig, the Apache stig, the Postgres stig, and, and bundle them all up, plus with Tableau server specific things as well, uh, is the idea of that. But that, that would be a ways out there if we were to do that. Okay. Did you have your hand up or just? Well, I had a question on that. Yep. Are you speaking in terms of like vulnerabilities in components, those kinds of vulnerabilities, or? So I mean. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that is not something we're doing right now. You know, I said we're pretty early on this journey. With that. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's in the 2019.3 um, server management add-on is where the, so I'm sorry, that is incorrect. It is in 2019.3 server, the server management add-on adds additional functionality that lets you use like the AWS key store to manage the keys that it uses. So, um, so yeah, and that's, that's already released. So, but at this point it does not have, it's not a FIPS 140-2 validated module doing the encryption, uh, but that's something that we're looking at. Okay, well that wraps things up. Um, you know, we started out by doing a bit of a tour of the, the laws and the frameworks and so forth um, to get an idea of, of how all this stuff fits together uh, and then went through the 800-53 control matrix in particular um, to look at the ones of, you know, what are the best practices for configuring Tableau Server to meet those requirements. Uh, there's a bunch of other resources that I have linked to uh, from this slide deck. Uh, link to the, the new white paper, um, plus all the stuff that's else you know, in there, the requirements itself, um, all of the individual, um, the, the individual security controls, there are links uh, throughout the document. So hopefully this will be a good uh, place that you can use as a tool to consolidate uh, this information. And a lot of the same links are in the white paper itself, so that's another place. It has links to all the documentation for how to do the configurations uh, for the individual control requirements. And so thank you very much. I appreciate your uh, joining today. I hope this was uh, informative and worth your while. And please definitely uh, complete the session survey on this. This is the first time we've done this session. So I would love some feedback um, on to see what you think. All right, thank you. And hope you have a good rest of your conference.